Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Ministry of Education declares its intention to abolish corporal punishment in schools. The Department of Health and Wellness receives more support for the prevention and treatment of diabetes. St. Lucia's official culinary team for the Taste of the Caribbean competition has been selected. All that plus the latest in youth development sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development has declared its intention to suspend and eventually abolish corporal punishment in schools completely. The move is in keeping with the many conventions that St. Lucia is signatory to with international agencies. Chief Education Officer in the Ministry of Education, Rafina Charles, indicated that while the Education Act has no stated policy for the abolition of corporal punishment, it did contain structures in the act that stipulated how corporal punishment should be administered. Charles added, however, that the department must ensure that the mandates stipulated in the conventions, which include protection of children, are achieved. The department has also embraced UNICEF's support, um, supported child-friendly schools framework or the effective schools framework. And as a means to deal with violence against children. It looks at the impl implementation of quality standards that influence the well-being and the rights of children as learners. As such, we have embraced a framework of positive behavior management practices in our school. To aid in the implementation process of the practices, the department has established a working committee the committee is also charged with the responsibility of deciding the required initiatives and implementation dates towards the eventual abolition of corporal punishment. These events include the sensitization of the general public and training for educators on island. In 2007, the department established the Child Friendly Schools Initiative, following which a pilot project was implemented at two schools. A rollout system was then started which included the addition of two schools per district per year. In 2014, we had conducted a national consultation on discipline and um, there was overwhelming support for a positive approach to discipline generally from stakeholders far and wide. Um, and so it is not, it's, it's not a new concept um, to introduce the, the idea of suspending corporal punishment altogether considering the fact that so many schools are already using the the um, child friendly schools system and the effective schools framework the department of education indicated that corporal punishment will be suspended for a year as it works towards the eventual abolition of corporal punishment the department of health and wellness continues to receive strong support from the queen elizabeth diamond jubilee trust in its effort to deliver prevention and treatment services for people with diabetes. More from Fennel Neptune. A team from the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust recently visited St. Lucia to review the work undertaken for the Diabetic Retinopathy Program. Communications Officer of the Trust, Samantha Wood, says the visit will grant them the opportunity to meet healthcare professionals and patients to see how the program is executed. Wood believes the Diabetic Retinopathy Program will help to address the burden of diabetes in St. Lucia. It is really important that the Trust are working in St. Lucia with the Ministry of Health um, on our Diabetic Retinopathy Initiative. Um, people don't need to go blind from having diabetes, so early intervention and screening will help this. So if people do have diabetes, make sure that you're getting your eyes checked um, so that you don't go blind from diabetes. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Sharon Belma george expressed enthusiasm to continue working with the Trust to improve the diabetic retinopathy services on island. One of the aspects of this program is definitely communication. So they're hoping to review the program at different levels and to get feedback of implementation to date. This program is extremely um, valuable to us as prior to the funding received through the trust and also with the support of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, we were not able to do laser surgery for diabetics with eye problems within the island. 
Dr. Belma George also called on St. Lucians to take advantage of the diabetic retinopathy services available at the various primary health care centers. With the Ministry of Health and Wellness, we continue to urge all of our diabetics, whether you are experiencing problems with your vision or not, we are urging everybody to please come in to get your eyes screened and checked. We provide clinics on a every Friday at the Cashries Wellness Center and presently at the Labry Wellness Center since our Viewfort Wellness Center is under um, repair. The Diabetic Retinopathy Program is managed by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and funded by the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. Still on the issue of health, air, nose and throat services are expected to be enhanced at the Victoria and St. Jude hospitals as a team from Canada visits to exchange their knowledge and expertise. More from Miguel Morissette. Air, throat and nose surgeon Dr. Mark Samaha, along with a team of volunteers are leading their services to St. Lucia through training to physicians and also performing surgeries for patients in need. Dr. Samaha says such an initiative is important as it will promote the sharing of knowledge and learning from each other. Uh, I believe it is uh, greatly beneficial to patients of St. Lucia uh, to have the opportunity to have these services. It's beneficial, beneficial to the local doctors who can work with us and we can exchange uh, knowledge, information and experience. Uh, it is also beneficial for us uh, because we get to learn about how the medical system here is, the kinds of patients that, uh, the kind of issues that patients may uh, have to deal with and through exchanges with the local doctors we also obviously learn. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac says she is extremely grateful for the service Dr. Samaha is providing, which is extremely beneficial to St. Lucians. We have a young girl whose face was actually blown out with a flare gun. We have people with tumors, with deformities on their face. We have another gentleman that was electrocuted in a building in Castries, and he has been going through extensive surgery in Colombia. And here you have these doctors coming together here to assist us for free. So this is an invaluable service that we are getting here. And these are good Samaritans that decided that they are going to assist these people um, to make them look a lot better than they actually look right now. Medical Director for Victoria Hospital, Dr. Alicia Eugene says, this activity will serve as a platform for the surgeons to work side by side and acquire valuable knowledge. Right now in Victoria Hospital, we have one air, nose and throat surgeon that's Dr. Sixtus Gabriel, and not only would be working along with them, but he has the opportunity to learn and exchange his own um, experiences here in St. Lucia, which may be very different from what we have in, the, in Canada. And not only would he have the ability to do some plastic surgery, but I think we have patients, especially some cancer patients, who have tumors on their, on their faces or persons with cleft palate. Clients with conditions pertaining to air, nose and throat from the Victoria and St. Jude hospitals benefited from medical services offered by Dr. Samaha and his team. From the Communications Unit in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Miguel Morris at reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly, coming up the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. If you're HIV positive or have an STI, having unprotected sex with multiple partners puts them in grave danger. You'll expose every partner and their present and future partners to HIV or another STI. Use a condom every time you have sex. You can live a productive life even if diagnosed with HIV. Remember, early detection is key to your survival. Be responsible, protect yourself and others. Help stop the spread of HIV and other STIs. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Four more matches were completed as the preliminary stage in the 2019 Mass United Schools Cricket Tournament continued Wednesday. At the Balata playing field, 
Current secondary maintained their unbeaten run in the tournament thus far by completing a comfortable 129 run victory over Cicero secondary. Current secondary batting first in difficult conditions made 210 for 5 in their allocated 30 overs with Kiram Alphonse stranded on a well-played 98 not out. His innings included 7 fours and 10 sixes. Other contributions came from Daniel Edwin with 16 and 13 each to Shahid Roberts and Mikhail Nelson. Cicero secondary's batting faltered and were dismissed for 81 in 28 overs. Kiwin joined with 15 and Noel Leo 10 were the only batsmen to reach double figures. Bowling for current secondary, Lee Solomon had impressive figures of 6 wickets for 9 runs. Adelari Sous playing for you, Antipo Secondary registered a commanding 247 run victory over Clendon Mason Memorial. Antipo Secondary winning the toss and batting first, made 377 for 8 in their allotted 38 overs, with Efren Charles recording the second century of the tournament. Charles, a former Winnet Islands under 15 batsman, batted superbly, stroking a brilliant 102. Other useful scores came from Denzel Roberts with a well played 56. Donnell Pape, 26, female player Zadia James, 16, and Jaden Laffey, 10. Bowling for Clendon Mason Memorial, Jaquan Estefan collected 4 for 19, Curlin Severin, 2 for 59, and Jason Regabert, 2 for 9. In reply, Clendon Mason Memorial, they were dismissed for 130 in 19.4 overs, with Curvy de Turville making 25, Jason Regabert, 24, and Ravi Lawrence, 24. Bowling for Archie Post Secondary. Jaden Laffey, back 5 for 24. At the when playing field in Monipo, Miku secondary dominated Granivere secondary by 9 wickets. Granivere secondary invited to bat first by Miku secondary, dismissed for 75 in 21 overs, with Mayor Stanislaus making 22. Bowling for Miku secondary, Nikesh Henry had best figures of 4 for 40, Marklin Estefan, 3 for 15, and Brent Edward, 3 for 20. Chasing a victory target of 76, Cody Lesmore with 80 not out and Nian de Turville, 60 not out, brought Miku secondary to victory, finishing on 76 for 1 in 11 overs. Another PI playing field, Scherzer secondary enjoyed a convincing 177 run victory over View for Comprehensive Secondary. Scherzer secondary winning the toss and electing to bat made a respectful 237 all out in 41 overs with Darvel Edward top scoring of a well-played 71, Jim Peter 30 and Curvy Roseman 24, bowling for view for comprehensive. Bernard Calix had figures of 4 for 44 and Christian Jebatis 2 for 18. In response, view for comprehensive dismissed for 60 in 16.5 overs, doing the damage with the ball for Schwizel secondary, Ed Cooper, 4 wickets without conceding a run. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, has expressed pleasure that the St. Lucia government was able to collaborate with the United Nations Children Fund UNICEF on a landmark study on adolescence in St. Lucia. Minister Estefan's remarks came during the launch of the subregion's first in-depth study on adolescence on Thursday. Naturally, this allows and shows that St. Lucia is emerging as a touch bearer in the area of progressive social research. And this research serves as a catalyst for social re-engineering. Through such a major research tool, we will be better able to engage communities in developmental change, in tackling poverty, and to move towards achieving a more economically equitable, just and sustainable society. The Youth Development and Sports Minister further suggested that it was important to realize that if appropriate research, programs aimed at change are likely to be based on implicit or assumed problems or inferred community-based needs. And as we end today, some more shots from the completion of the first training stint for young sports leaders following the completion of a four-day stint at the VG Malipopa Sports Complex on Thursday.
That's all from us at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association has selected the official St. Lucia National Culinary Team for 2019. The team will represent St. Lucia in the annual Taste of the Caribbean competition, one of the most prestigious culinary competitions in the region. More from Anicia Antoine. Fifty chefs from hotels and restaurants around the island participated in the National Culinary Competition, which sought to select the team that will represent St. Lucia at the annual Taste of the Caribbean competition. The emerging winners are Zaim Kade with the title of Chef of the Year, Clayton Julian with the title of Junior Chef, Chef Ricardo Josue with the title of Seafood Chef, Vernon Daw with the title of Beef Chef, Imani Hippolyte in the pastry competition, and Steffi Marius in the chocolate competition. Chef Richardson Skinner is the team manager of the St. Lucia National Culinary Team for 2019. The SLHTA Culinary Committee, along with its partners and sponsors, worked very hard in the preparation and execution of this competition, with two main objectives in mind. One is to establish the new 2019 SLHDA culinary team for St. Lucia. And two, which I think is most important for us, is to be able to, ev to evaluate the level of our culinary professionals on the island. We wanted this competition to have a purpose, to have a meaning. And this is why we decided to make our judging criteria so meticulous and so detail. The Caribbean's best chefs and culinary teams have been participating in talk since 1993. Last year, the St. Lucia National Culinary Team won gold for Best Vodka Cocktail and silver for Culinary Team of the Year, Best Pastry Chef of the Year, Junior Chef and Bartender of the Year. President of the SLHTA, Carolyn Trebetskoy, says these chefs play a vital role in showcasing the tourism product. I have nothing but the greatest respect for the culinary teams that I have encountered in these competitions over the years and the tremendous potential and skills that these teams have showcased. With the rise of social media, a picture on Instagram or Facebook of a beautiful dish has the potential to attract as much attention and interest in our destinations as, for example, a picture of our Pito Mountains. And this is why I consider all chefs, whether they are going to be part of the national culinary team or not, very important ambassadors for St. Lucia and for the Caribbean at large. The selected chefs for the St. Lucia culinary team, as well as a substitute team, will soon commence the training process for the Taste of the Caribbean competition. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueol. With just one click, the internet connects people, businesses, and nations. Being connected can open a world of information and opportunities. You can get services and products of your choice much faster. From electronic financial transactions to connecting with family and friends. From being up to date with the latest news and information to learning new skills and acquiring academic qualifications. All from the convenience of your home or wherever you roam. Get connected today. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueol. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information Government Services, as GIS, as a Television National Payer NTN, Capazito Nouvelle Arqueol. Président Primus Hutchinson. Cette ci j'ai trouvé un rapport de l'organisation UNICEF pour aider à aider le développement parmi les jeunes qui a sorti dans l'âge des enfants pour entrer un jeune adulte. Ça veut dire pour entrer dans l'âge majeur. Le rapport est fait pour tout ce type de pays là qui a fait demande pour le gouvernement pour implémenter WEG pour aider à placer ces jeunes adultes ça là. D'ailleurs, des gens qui ont aidé en ligne éducation, égalité, protection, rendabilisme, problème côté jeunes filles qui ont trouvé en cette à ce bon l'école. 
Maladie sexuelle n'a pas mis plusieurs autres problèmes. Après ce moment, il y a quitté pour écouter en chambre de DRGIS. Je suis et puis ministre qui est responsable pour la jeunesse expo, Honorable Edmond Estefan. Honorable Estefan dit nous qui va faire ça là, car il dit le gouvernement à son meilleur manière pour aider. Parce que nous, en cette liste, nous avons besoin de tout le monde qui travaille ensemble. Nous avons besoin de tous les jeunes gens qui ont nous produit des choses en éducation, en sport. On a fait tout le bagage. Comment il y a affecté les venir pour um, travailler avec des fois le so, Or Donc, il y a un report qui a dit que nous avons fait la vie de nous pour nous faire la vie de nous faire la vie de nous faire la vie de En opinion, comment vous avez fait ça pour nous aider à développer la jeunesse à pays? Oui, c'est un bail qui est nécessaire parce que. Peut-être avant, nous n'avons pas une pièce de study, nous n'avons pas une pièce de study. Donc, nous n'avons juste un guess. Mais actuellement, nous avons un study qui regarde nos statistiques, qui regarde nos chaibas, mais c'est jeune gens. Et puis, actuellement, nous avons un direct qui ça nous a fait pour aider. Ministre, la question de la responsabilité pour la transformation sociale, l'égalité pour la justice sociale, et l'autre affaire comme ça, on a le nom de mon tout, déclaré qu'il était là pour apporter un pile d'informations. Et c'est la responsabilité du ministère et gouvernement généralement pour implémenter la meilleure façon ces vaccins là pour aider à faire ça un succès parce que il a dit nous ça nous a fait pour le présent et ce qu'il a travaillé qui manière il a travaillé si nous nous faisons changement en qui manière pour nous faire changement il a aussi dit nous qui ça nous peut-être pas qu'à faire qui est nécessaire pour faire avec il a dit nous qui situation à nous et avec jeunesse Um, le, quand nous lisons à part ça, ça va faire nous connaître qui manière pour nous faire plan pour aller devant. Il va aussi de nous faire des programmes pour nous organiser par jeunesse avec par les consorts. So, pour ces raisons, ça va être bien important parce que dès lors, on va faire un travail qui est bon, mais ça va faire un bon travail et, et, et on va savoir si il va faire succès. So, les salas, nous regardons le rapport salas, il y a des choses qui sont bonnes, il y a des informations, il y a des choses qui sont qui bon, qui va bon, ça nous pour faire, qui va faire une situation, mais avec qui situation, je ne sais pas si c'est En parmi ces officiers qui étaient présents, c'était le représentatif Rod Ionesco, si vous voulez parler, le ministère de la Transformation sociale, égalité et justice, Mme Velde Joseph, et l'autre officier ministère, et les étudiants Rod l'école secondaire couvent, Saint Joseph's Convent. Ministère de l'Éducation, j'ai déclaré attention pour arrêter les affaires, les instituteurs, ça veut dire les à l'école, qui battent les étudiants, qui ont une punition à l'école. C'est attention au ministère pour abolir l'action de ça, nettement. Ça, c'est parce que c'est ici initiative à ce règlement international pour faire ça. Le chef officier de l'éducation, c'est le Rufino Charles, déclaré que malgré la loi de l'éducation qui a gouverné à faire ça, parce qu'il faut trouver franchement la règle en direction de ça. L'année 4 même, on a en place pour montrer qui a façon ça peut être fait. Mme Charles aussi remarqué le département qui a embrassé l'objectif de l'organisation UNICEF pour établir un environnement pour toujours protéger les enfants à l'école. L'officier chef d'éducation a annoncé aussi la journée un comité en place qui a décidé à quelle façon pour implémenter ces règles là et date pour véritablement abolir la punition à l'école. Ça a aussi créé une session pour éduquer le public là, généralement, comme si pour ou une chef salaire qui a trouvé bon si a fait bon si pour, après une consultation qui a été faite l'année 2014, le département d'éducation qui a implémenté le web salaire pour une année, un effort pour abolir la punition salaire à l'école cette ci nettement. Autorité qui est ça pour la conservation nationale en collaboration et puis National Trust de cette ci qui organise un portrait qui a montré significance pour protéger l'environnement pays nous, à la mer, la terre ciel. L'initiative, ça là, principalement, c'est pour établir le club de l'environnement à l'école, c'est ici, un effort pour protéger la plage, ça veut dire le bord de la mer, pays. L'objectif là, c'est pour conserver le bord de la mer, au lieu de ici, à façon de plusieurs activités et pour placer des bombes pour déposer des ordres qui ont trouvé le bord de la mer, pays. Il y a un volontaire, puisque, ça, c'est Sean Azoldjoua, 
Où est-ce que ça, pour ce club de l'événement ça là, il déclare qu'il a choisi pour établir le programme d'éducation de l'événement ça là. Et puis, il y a une journée sur la plage et aussi pour bâtir et placer ces bombes là, pour euh, placer ces à sur ces plages là. Il marque que ça c'est principalement pour éduquer et encourager le peuple là, pour ne pas détruire le bord de la main et pour déposer ordi à ces bombes là, plutôt. Officier de communication pour National Trust, Correct Crooks Charles, explique que L'année passée, Trust a conduit une activité de la même façon concernant les problèmes et les plastiques. Excellent, Mme Charles, il n'y a jamais trop pour faire le peuple changer qui est nécessaire pour réduire à ce problème de pollution, particulièrement dans la mer, parce qu'il n'y a pas seulement affecter les vives marins, mais aussi la vie. Alors, l'année ça, c'est que l'école NEF qui a participé dans le programme pour renforcer la commission pour nous continuer protéger l'environnement et pour aussi protéger la vie peuple là. Il y a un CGW qui est ça pour faire ça là, un business massif, Sancho Raggi, déclaré que le programme ça là, qui a supporté le principe business massif, à sous la meilleure manière pour contrôler les ordres, particulièrement le plastique. Raggi a renforcé le point qui, ça c'est une opinion compagnie, et qui est très nécessaire pour éduquer les étudiants à sous la meilleure manière pour ménager et contrôler le problème plastique de bon la vie Marseille a jamais été 6 000 dollars pour aider à la réservation et la protection de la Marseille. Si. Pour entrer dans le finissement de la première phase du projet, le même club, là, ensemble et puis les instituteurs, qui a participé dans plusieurs expériences de science concernant la protection de la plage, le 7 mars, à sur la plage La Vigie. C'est ce que l'école qui a participé dans le programme, c'était l'école secondaire Gozile, l'école garçon et fille en marche, l'école première des nuits. L'école secondaire HES et l'école secondaire OPI. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé une nouvelle aujourd'hui, M. Madame. Je vous remercie autant pour garder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Pour que vous puissiez encore présenter une nouvelle nouvelle. Merci, M. Pil Primus. Et ici, nous allons voir ce qui se passe à nous, weather-wise. A high-pressure system over the Atlantic will continue to maintain moderate to brisk easterly winds and above normal seas around the eastern Caribbean region during the next few days. Low-level clouds drifting with this wind flow will bring a few showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and above normal seas. The seas moderate to locally rough with waves and northerly swells 5 to 8 feet or 1.5 to 2.4 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 6.20 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Trout.